Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, you get to speak with Nicole Holland, the founder of Interviews That Convert. She helps innovative companies amplify their reach, reputation, and revenue through podcasts. She initiates in creating and executing a custom-designed strategy, facilitating high-level relationships you need with hard-to-reach prospects through podcasts. This way, a company can flourish and earn the most significant impact, the least pull on resources, and the fastest time possible. She speaks with successful entrepreneurs and business owners across a wide range of niches about what it really took for them to reach rock star status, as well as conduct masterclass interviews and resource sharing episodes to help online business owners up their game and profitability. She's super skilled at her chosen profession, a knowledgeable and intuitive consultant. Let's learn about her origin story in this episode. Thank you so much, Nicole Holland, for coming on to the podcast. I'm so excited to talk with you. And I've been following your journey and uh, it's been super exciting. And I'm just super excited. Quick question. Is there any relation with Tom Holland? Not that I know of. And do you know who Tom Holland is? No, not that I know of. All right. It was a good, uh, I mean, I I, I was was like, (laughs) I'll give it a try. Tom Holland plays Spider-Man in the new Marvel movies. Oh, okay, cool. All right. Okay. (laughs) Nicole, thank you so much for coming on. I'm uh, excited. I am almost starstruck because, you know, I've, I've seen you in videos and I've seen you do webinars and it's been, it's been super exciting to learn from you through the many different things you've been teaching. And, you know, you've, you've been doing podcasting for a lot longer than I have. And I'm sure it all, you know, we, we all learn from our mistakes and make it better and your podcast just gets better and better over time so you know tell us a little journey about yourself and how you got started and 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 then you know we'll we'll jump into what it is we don't we'll jump into it yeah yeah awesome well janai thank you so much for having me it's really an honor um i've i've appreciated you being a part of my community for the past years and um, all of the great stuff that you've been doing. I see you working. I see you out there on social crushing it. And frankly, that's like the most important thing in mm-hmm. my eyes to see people taking action on building their dreams and making their goals a reality. And so I'm super honored that you've invited me on. And um, yeah. So, Fantastic. yeah. So Thank you so much. You bet. What's so funny is that. Start? Yeah, no, I I just wanted to answer. I just wanted to like comment on that, that, you know, it's amazing that, you know, my internal mind, I'm like, I'm not doing enough, not doing enough. But then you hear from outside party and they're like, dude, you're crushing on social media. And I'm like, I'm not even, you know, close to my own, like, like I'm not even close to the bar that I've set for myself. So thank you for that acknowledgement. Absolutely. And you know what? every one of us goes through the same thing. It doesn't matter how quote big we are, Mm -hmm. right? It's still, we still have those inner voices and those inner critics telling us we should do more. We should be more. We can, you know, and the truth is oftentimes we're comparing ourselves against an unrealistic idea. And this is not helpful for anyone. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I had in this past, uh, in 2019, I had to just take a break. I had to get like, I had some systems that broke down. Um, I had a team. I had some things with my podcast that technically 
um, when I moved it over to another host, mm -hmm. went awry, and basically oh. I lost 90% of my audience, which was hugely devastating in many, many, many ways. <laughs> yeah. and, and so I just couldn't hack it. You know, I just had to say, this is not, I, I was trying to fix everything for mm. the first little while, driving myself insane. You can't come up when everything falls down around you. It's not yeah. like you're going to be able to piece it back together, right? Imagine a building blowing up and you're yeah. at the bottom of the rubble, taking each little stone that you find and trying to build a wall again, doesn't make any sense. But sometimes when we get in these situations, we forget that. Mm. And so for me, I had to step out of it all and say, it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to put my energy and focus there. It, my energy and focus would better serve me in other places. Yeah. And when I'm ready, I will build it back. And so I think sometimes we, we forget that we are human and there's only so much we can do. And yes. we also need to prioritize of all the things that we could be doing, what should we really be doing? What's going to actually serve us exactly. as human beings, as parents, as children, as you know, partners? Like, What's going to serve us best? Because we all have the same number of hours in a day. Exactly. We all have a finite amount of yeah. energy. Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. We... we... Uh, we overthink things, we overanalyze, and we will put ourselves down and, and because we didn't achieve certain something, which is, which is really funny because we should be thanking those things because they help us grow. 100%. And I also like to, um, I also like to view these setbacks as opportunities. And mm. even though I can't necessarily see it at the time, yeah. sometimes um, I trust and I have faith that everything is happening for me and not to me. Yeah. And even though things happen sometimes and, and they're hard and, you know, I, I'll be upset, I'll grieve, whatever the case may be. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't let it control me because I recognize it's part of my journey. Mm -hmm. No, that's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful and powerful. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, how did you get started and what inspired you to be a podcast host? Yeah. So back in 2015, I was hosting my first summit called the Business Building Rockstar Summit. And I endeavored to introduce folks who were like me wanting to start an online business and create um, money from an idea, from their experience, from home without having to be anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that we're we are recording at the time where the coronavirus has just recently become a thing yeah. and people are adapting. Well, back in 2014, I was so ill and I was working in corrections. I was an officer. And there were, my, my health was so bad and nobody could figure out what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it got to a point where, you know, I couldn't walk, I couldn't breathe, wow. I couldn't go into work. And, um, and I wasn't full time. So I wasn't getting benefits. I wasn't getting paid when I wasn't there, right? Mm -hmm. I was hourly. And I realized that I had to do something different. I had to um, stop being in a place that was just, I, I felt so bad in. Yeah. And I also realized that with my health in such a state, I couldn't go get a job somewhere else where I would have to be there at a time. Like some days I literally could not move my legs wow. to carry my body. Yeah. So that's when, and I knew nothing about the internet. Um, I had no social presence. I was a correctional officer and before that, I did crisis support and interventions. I was a top level um, foster parent before that. So I've been working in social services for a really long time mm. and I did not want to be known. I did not want people to <laughs> find me. You know, it wasn't like I wanted to say, hey, here I am. So I did do a lot of inner work in order to, you know, make, I made the decision that the outcome of being able to create money from the comfort of my home regardless of any circumstances yeah. was more important 
than the discomfort of my fears of overcoming and stepping through my fears. And so in, yeah, so 2015, I wound up hosting what's called a summit and I interviewed 30 experts, one per marketing topic on how to generate leads and revenue mm. from through, through the internet from an idea basically. Yeah. And one of the topics that was hot was this thing called podcasting, which I had no interest in. I knew mm. nothing about. And I interviewed a gentleman by the name of John Lee Dumas, who was very well known um, and is very well known mm -hmm. in the podcasting space. And after the interview, he said to me, Nicole, you're pretty good at this. Why not start a podcast? And I was like, I'm not even, not even interested, like not even thinking about it. And he said, well, you know, you, you really might want to yeah. um, because it's a lot easier than Summit. And uh, so it might be something to consider. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this guy knows a lot more than I do. And mm -hmm. he's making six figures a month. So I might want to pay attention to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so after the summit, I did touch base with him. And um, I, that, that's, that's the, that, like, that was that's it. That's the history. That was yeah. it. <laughs> and Everything else kind of went history. from there. He helped me create a podcast through his program. And the rest wow. is history. That's, that's pretty powerful. So, so how did you end up creating a summit to teach people? I mean, what, what is it, is, did that all started because you dived into the internet and learned about the internet? And, and so from 2014 to 2015, that's all you learned about. So, um, so I quit my job December 28th. 2014. That was my last official day. Mm -hmm. So in 20, and I had come across summits shortly before um, I quit my job. And there was this, this online thing mm -hmm. called the superhero summit from a woman by the name of Marisa Murgatroyd. And it was author, speakers, coaches. Now I used to be a coach in a past life. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I, I was coaching for many years. Um, before I went into corrections and I have a background in marketing mm. um, and I've had a business as well. So I have all this history and these skills, but when I was in the midst of the misery of my own prison of being yeah. in, you know, I, of forgetting who I was and, and relying on that job, I had forgotten all of these amazing things that I did and, and mm -hmm. ways that I could um, serve and support and also earn money myself. Yeah. And so I, as I, jumped into, as I quit my job and I said, okay, I got to figure out how to make money fast. Cause I didn't quit with a plan. I just quit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought, okay, I am going to invest in somebody to help me as a, as a coach, right? Somebody to help me get from where I am to where I want to be. Mm -hmm. I understand the value of coaching. I understand the value of investing. So it wasn't a question for me. So I started doing that and what I found was that the different, mo for the majority of the programs and people that I spent money with, I found that their promises, they didn't fulfill their promises. Mm -hmm. And this made me very angry because I am not somebody who expects to pay something and then all of a sudden money falls from the sky. Yeah. I expect though that if you tell me this is what this is going to give me the ability to do or this is what you're, and then it's not true, I get mad. Mm. Um, and then I get more mad about seeing other people getting taken advantage of. And I know that's probably crazy, but there's probably a lot of your listeners can relate. Maybe you can oh, relate yeah. as well, mm -hmm. right? It's like for me, you know, I, I have my own stuff and I'll, I'll have my feelings about what I want to create for myself. But when I see people do what I believe is take advantage of others, I get fired up. Mm -hmm. And so that's what was happening. I remember being at an event and um, speaking with a couple of folks who were considering joining a, a big ticket program who are on welfare. And wow. like, I didn't know, like, why would you go to this event where there's, mm -hmm. you know, like, I, I don't know, but they didn't have, an, they have children and they didn't have any job and they were getting government funding to live and take care of their children. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But when you're sitting there in a room 
and you are about to drop $18,000 that you don't have on a program wow. because these people tell you it's going to change your life and they brought in these, um, they have these people that come to these events that are financers, right? Mm. So they'll give you like a high interest, people who are not able to pay the money back. So they yep. sell this big promise and that was like, really infuriating to me. And that I think was the final, like, I'm not letting this happen mm. to more people. And so from that, that's why I created the summit. I thought I want to find influencers, educators, people who are real and are willing to help with a hand up. We don't need handouts, people. We need right. hands up, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But to give a hand up, to teach the basics, of different marketing strategies without any expectation yeah. of being paid for it. Now, of course, they sell things, but not from the summit. And so my my expectation was give, give during the summit, summit yeah. invite people to get more information, support them, and then invite them to work with you. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so that was what, that's what I did. And that, uh, from that summit, my entire life changed. Wow, that's amazing. So you put in a lot of work into creating the summit because you saw people were not being true and they're not being honest and not really providing value. So you're like, how can I change this? I mean, I have the ability. You went out and, do, and did it. That's, that's really amazing. And I had no idea what I was doing. I yeah. just decided this is what I want to do. So mm -hmm. I'm going to figure it out. And nowadays we have all this great technology. Like this was before Facebook Live and yeah. Zoom was still in its infancy. It's mm -hmm. funny, I've been using Zoom for five years at time wow. of recording over five years. And now it's a household household name yes, thanks it to is. COVID. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, I didn't know what to do. There was no like program. I put, I did everything myself. I built yeah. it out. I did, did I know how to build a website? Not when I quit my job, mm -hmm. but I went and got a program to learn how to build websites and yeah. figured out how to build websites. So nice. you do what you need to do. If you, again, if your goals are more important than your circumstances, you'll figure it out. Yes, absolutely. That's really, that's really powerful. So tell me, uh, so once you got the podcast started and you've been podcasting for since 2015, so that's five years. 16 or 21st. 2016. Okay. Yeah, okay. just over four years. So just over four years. And you've, you've interviewed some really powerful people, which is really amazing. And um, so what is, I don't even know how to like put this question together, but how like you continue to reach out to people because now you're known as this person who created Summit. You interviewed, I'm sure you had interviews from that Summit, right? Mm -hmm. So from that, and John, J, you know, JLD, John Lee Dumas told you, hey, you need to get, get on this podcast thing. So where did you go next? Yeah, so I did. I, um, I started podcasting. So after the summit, um, I chatted with him and decided, yes, this is a fit for me. I bought his program. I studied it. I went through it. Now, I did already figure out how to do interviews, and I was already really good at that. Mm -hmm. um, just innately, I care about systems. I care about workflows, like things like that make sense to me. Yeah. Um, and I care about relationships. And when I started, when I went to start the summit, you know, I was reaching out to people who I had no relationship with, who didn't owe me anything. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to interview them. And so I went in the way I go into any relation and any, any ask situation mm -hmm. where I want something from somebody else. And first, I figured out what do they want from me, right? And so yeah. I sought to figure out how can I get these people's attention, positive attention? How can I honor them and support them before I ask for them to support me? Mm -hmm. And it works like a charm, as it does, because that's, yep. you know, relationships. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And then we, um, from there, I had all these people who were sharing about the summit. Um, there was no expectation. I made that very clear when I invited them to be guests. Yeah. I, I said, you know, I, I hope to inspire you 
to share. Of course, I want you to share. So I'm going to do all these different things. And I found ways to make it fun for them and exciting mm-hmm. for them. One, the first year, I turned everybody into a cartoon rock star. The second year, and they all got their rock star avatars. In fact, John Corcoran was one of um, my first my first guests. And nice. he used his avatar on... Um, on Twitter for like three years before he changed it. Um, one year, I, I did this for three years. Uh, I think it was in 2016, I sent everybody a t-shirt that said, I rocked the mic with Nicole Holland at BBRS 2016. And I had them take pictures and post it on social media. Right. So I, I tried to find ways to make it fun and mm. interesting for the guests to my experts to share, but I never expected it. I never told them they had to. Um, I think this is a mistake most Mm -hmm. people make both in hosting summits and in hosting podcasts Mm -hmm. that they say, okay, here's what you have to do for me. Well, you know, when you're asking somebody for their time, they're already giving you the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like what what can you you do for them to to, to make them want to like if somebody exactly. if if i'm on a show and somebody goes and goes above and beyond and like creates some graphics that mm-hmm. are beautiful or does something that makes me feel inspired to share then of course i'm going to share yeah. but when people just do the bare minimum then there's like you know there's not a whole lot of incentive yeah so from the summit, I already had relationships from the first one with 30, 30 influencers mm-hmm. and experts who were happy to share me because they felt that the quality warranted the share with their mm-hmm. audience. So I built my list quite quickly from that. Yeah. Um, I also was guesting on other people's summits because I wanted to get an experience of what that was like. Yeah. I was also guesting on podcasts before I actually launched mine because I wanted to get what the experience of what that was mm-hmm. like. And I've got this uh, creative but also analytical brain where I then look at, okay, here's what I experienced. Here's what I liked. Here's what I didn't like. Here's what I want to do differently. Um, and, and then it would inspire other ideas mm-hmm. that were purely mine. And um, yeah, so that's how I, I kind of... Um, that's how I got started yeah. in recognizing, okay, here's what I want to do. Here's what I don't want to do. That's really, that's really powerful and really inspiring because you, you create an ecosystem or an environment of compassion and gratitude and sharing value. And I think that reflects did on everybody who were you know who were the, who was your guest and who was who wanted to be like this is this person i mean they just saw you as somebody who is i like to try the, the and heart. go above and beyond i yes. like to try and give right and i legitimately care about relationships so there's a lot of you know as a podcaster myself when i yeah. went from the summit into the the podcast, I very quickly hit new and noteworthy. I very quickly started getting unsolicited media attention. Mm. Um, I was new and noteworthy, I think for about two and a half years at at quite close to the top in the U S of um, the marketing and business uh, category at the time. And I, I didn't seek that out. Right. I wasn't trying to game a system. I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to get people's attention. I was just doing, what I believed in doing. And I was just treating people the way I would want to be treated. And from that, you know, I think people recognize what's authentic. People recognize that, hey, this person is like genuine and Mm -hmm. I built up trust. And I also was always looking to be of service. So, um, and this is actually how I started my business, which is all around podcasting. Because I was just giving people suggestions and ideas and tips on, hey, you know, if you do this, you're going to get a better sound. Hey, if you do this, you're going to connect more with my audience. Hey, if you do this, you know, hey, I just learned this. So I would share the value that I was, you know, things that I was getting to know 
um, I would share with others. And then mm. when I had great guests on my podcast, I would say, hey, can I introduce you to some great podcasters? Yeah. So I, it just came very naturally to me when people were asking me to help them get on shows, when they were asking me to help them create their podcasts, because these were things I was already doing. Yeah. Just because I wanted to, because I want to see people succeed. Yes. Um, and it actually took me a little bit longer than, than maybe it should have, but sure. it did, yeah. to go, oh, wow, I can get paid for this. <laughs> I was just doing it to do it before. And I think that that really bred a lot of trust. And so to this day, you know, in fact, it's funny, at time of recording, in the next days, I am going to be reaching out to past guests. And I I'm just launching, I'm relaunching a program called Podcasting Goldmine. Mm -hmm. um, I've updated some things for the new state of the world after yeah. Corona. Yeah. Um, and so I am, I'm beta launching that. And so I'll be reaching out to past guests, to past, um, you know, connections that I may not have talked with for a couple of years, yeah. but I'm confident that when I, when I message them, um, you know, I look forward to hearing back from them. Yeah, so. absolutely. No, that's really powerful. And that's very insightful too, because I keep thinking, you know, what am I doing differently or what am I lacking in when I'm creating my podcast? Because when I started, I just wanted to do it to just get started, to just be able to document my, pod, my journey in, in my hobbies. And it, it is funny because I just had I had just finished reading Gary Vaynerchuk's, Vaynerchuk's Crushing It. And he said, just document the process. And I had just finished my beekeeping class. And I was starting a beekeeper, you know, I started becoming a beekeeper. So cool. <laughs> and I was I like, it. I'm going to talk about beekeeping. And, and I didn't pay too much attention with, you know, equipment either. I was like, I can just do it on my phone. The technology's there. I can do it while I'm driving because it's like a phone call. I'm just talking to somebody and I'm talking to myself now. So it was really fun getting started. And now this, this next chapters, you know, where I get to talk to folks like yourself, folks that are doing what they love to do. They're, they made their side hustle the main hustle and it's just so powerful to see the success stories and to see the the different things that you're doing and where your heart needs to be or your mind needs to be and, and the, the type of value that you're bringing to not just the audience but also the guests that are coming onto the podcast so it's it's been a it's been an awesome journey so far and you know thank you for you know, sharing your journey because like you said, you know, it took you longer than you had anticipated. And I, I think I'm in the same boat uh, where, you know, it's been, it, this is season three now and, you know, I'm still just taking it very slowly because I, st I luckily for me, fortunately for me, you know, I have a full-time job. So this is still a side hustle, but I want to, grow it, you know, organically and, you know, put in so much value that, you know, and I haven't done marketing at all. Like I am very, I suck at marketing, but I have all the materials that need to go for marketing. So I am working slowly and, you know, efficiently as much as I can to bring in some people that can help me do the marketing, that can help me do the posting and, you know, oh, let's, let's, put this out there information. Yeah, I am like so wanting to scream. Can I challenge you for a minute? You can challenge me, yes. Okay, because I'm about to get up on a soapbox. So you ready okay. for it? Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. What if what you believe you have to do just isn't true? Wow. Remember what I said about when a building crumbles? Yes. And you pick a build a... a this is what most podcasters do who are like you and how I was that started a podcast without a clear end goal. Mm -hmm. So this is what podcasting goldmine is about. This is what I teach about, whether it's, whether it's leveraging podcast interviews 
or leveraging the podcast medium as a podcaster. We do not build without the result in mind that we want to create. When you have that, it's very easy to achieve success. What happens and what I was just speaking earlier today Mm -hmm. with one of my mentors and I'm so fired up because it's like, oh, I keep seeing all these ads right now. I want to start a podcast. Let me teach you how to start a podcast. And they're (laughs) all the same. They're all the same. And and they're all going to lead people to poverty Mm. or keep them in poverty, keep them hoping, keep them feeling like there's something wrong with them because they're not getting the kind of numbers that these other people are saying, hey, well, you can do this and you can do this and I get this and I, and you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. That shit's going to just keep us spinning. Mm. So the truth is it is not hard to have success with anything you do when you are building from the end goal, right? Just like with a house, when you say, okay, I want to build a house. I want to build my dream home. So what do you need? You need to get the land. Without the land, you can't build the house, yeah. right? So you got the land. Great. Now you need an architect, right? You need surveys. You need all these things in the planning stage with a very clear vision of mm. what is going to go on that property, what that dream home is looking like. If you don't have that, then you're just building and you're putting sticks up and stones up and, and bricks up and concrete. And what do you have at the end? Who knows? But it's not a stable building. When you're creating a podcast, if you're just getting started and you don't have a very clear path, now that I, I work with established business owners. So everything that I do is coming from a conversion and an ROI standpoint. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that end goal, of what this podcast or whatever marketing strategy is going to do for you, Mm -hmm. then you're leaving it to the wind. And it's like throwing spaghetti at the wall. It's hope marketing. So I don't believe for a second Mm -hmm. that you are bad at marketing. I think that you have not had the direction that would show you here's here's where you're going. Now, what we can do to get you there in the fastest, easiest, and least resource uh, draining way. Mm. And then it can be fun and it can be easy. Like marketing is all about creating connections, which you're amazing at. And like, I remember you shared something, I think it was on Twitter. It was Twitter, Mm -hmm. Instagram. I think it was Twitter. Twitter, yeah. And I was like shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, look at that. I've got like Gary Vaynerchuk liked it and like my name's in there and I've gotten all this like traffic. I'm like, sweet. You just, by being you, you naturally will market when you're doing what feels right, when you're Mm -hmm. doing what you want to do um, to achieve a specific goal. But when you're doing it because it's what other people say you have to do, Mm -hmm. it's not, it it falls flat. It falls flat. No, that's that's a really solid point because as you're telling me about buying the land and building the house, you got you need all these people, you need all these instructions, and it it reminded me of something that I talk about, and it's it's basically building the playset that that I built last year in my backyard, and it came in six boxes. It's all wood and screws, but it came with a manual. On the manual, it says, hey, this is your end goal. This is what you're going to come out with. Here are the 50 steps. Here are the hundreds of parts that you need. You need to use this part and this part together and put it together. And then you get a house built. And you're, you're absolutely right. You got to have that end goal. And, and just to drill that in a little deeper, because people think, well, I'm going to get these 50 steps to start a podcast from Pat or John or any mm-hmm. of these other people who are teaching the mass market to create podcasts. That's the goal. You yeah. will. You'll follow those steps and you'll have a, you'll have a podcast. Then what? Then what? Then yeah. you can figure out how to monetize it? No. No. Then you've got a podcast and it could have, it, it, it's like trying to build something now without having mm-hmm. that plan. But you purchased that specific playset. You knew this is the playset I want for my mm-hmm. children. And that manual 
gave you exactly what you wanted. Yep. If you would have just said, I want a play set, you may have had something that didn't serve you and that wasn't, you know, wasn't what you wanted. And that's yeah. the difference between creating a podcast on purpose mm. versus a podcast because you want to be a podcaster, you want to create a podcaster because you heard podcasts are the way to grow your business. Mm -hmm. They absolutely are, but yeah. they're not going to grow your business if they're not built to grow, to grow business. your business. Oh man. So it's almost like, cause I've been blogging, right? So I've, I've blogged for ages and ages, technojunkie.com. And all I've done is just blog about technology and stuff that I like about but I've heard that people have made money through blogs because they're creating content, very specific and targeted content that's bringing them affiliates and whatnot. And I'm guessing that's what you're, that's, that's what you got to decide on what you want to do when you're creating the podcast too. And yeah. I guess the reason I wanted to create a podcast is to have a voice, to have the ability to, again, talk with people and create content and leave kind of a legacy to, Hey, when my kids grow up, you know, when they're teenagers, like, oh, my dad used to have a podcast, <laughs> right? Go back to and listen, to like, oh, I remember that. So I guess I started the podcast just to fulfill that kind of need, that kind of hole. I just want my voice out there, but I didn't think, okay, it could be, it, it could be used for monetization. Or how will it serve me beyond legacy? And what does legacy look like? Yeah. Right? There's and and I'm not criticizing you at all. Yeah, you absolutely. are doing what you heard to do, which is exactly like I did, and mm -hmm. exactly like most people do. Um, we don't we don't equate what we know oftentimes in our expertise yeah. with the other. It's so funny because you know I've been I started writing a book before the whole COVID outbreak, and it's mm. on pause right now until um, until a little bit later. But yeah. it's so funny because my book coach you know, we're doing an intensive and I'm like, why do I not already, like, I already know this stuff. This is exactly what I teach my people. Yeah. Why can't I convert it in my brain to writing a book? Well, it's because it's not our focus. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, you want to have a strategy. You want to have a very clear plan from the beginning. So even if it is, even if it has nothing to do with monetization and it is really just, um, you know, legacy and I want to connect with people and I, why, why, why do, do you, you want to have this legacy? What does this legacy look like in your mm. ideal world? You know, when I was in coaching school many, many, many years ago, we had an exercise that we had to do, um, writing our eulogy. So if you're going to do, you know, a legacy piece, really take the time to get yeah. deep and say, what am I leaving behind? How do I want people to remember me? How do I want my children to remember me? What, what is the, you know, the, the thing that I'm putting on this earth and I'm creating that will live long, long after I'm gone? Um, you know, it can be whatever your goals are. Yeah. Just get deep into it. Understand your why and then create from there. That's your North Star all the time. I hear yeah. people, I hear podcasters talk about and want to be podcasters talk about, oh, I could do this and I could do this. We have a million ideas and that's great. Write them down, put them in a jar, whatever you got to do. But when you're building a podcast that you want to convert into something, and in the case of the people I work with, we want it to convert into money. Mm -hmm. Then you are, um, you need to focus on one thing one goal for the podcast. It doesn't mean you can't have 10 different podcasts, sure. with 10 different goals, but when we're, that. and that's one thing a lot of podcasters do too, is we try and reach all these goals with one podcast. With one podcast. It's just oh. ineffective. It, it just keeps us spinning. It keeps us quote needing help because it's the, the, there's nothing, it's not attainable. We don't have that end goal. We don't know. Yeah. Here's the gauge. Have I succeeded? or not and where in the where along the journey am i because we're just creating to create we're yeah. not we're hoping something happens but we don't have a clear path wow it's almost like you're going you're wearing pajamas to every different event <laughs> yeah yeah that's a really good analogy <laughs> of it like 
you could i mean right now that's what everybody's doing because they're in pajamas they're home on zoom <laughs> Yeah, but it's you get like, to welcome, welcome to our world, you oh, know. Yeah, <laughs> those weird online people that have yeah, been exactly. doing it for years. Now the but, the rest of society catches up. <laughs> but you make a really good point about doing a different podcast for a different goal and then achieving that goal. Wow. We'll have to talk offline because that's I what I that's what I teach in podcasting goldmine. So yeah. that people are not spending the years struggling and trying to figure it out so that yeah. we're going directly in six weeks from getting really clear on what we're going to accomplish wow. and creating that and launching that lead generating revenue generating podcast within six weeks. That's very powerful. Well, thank you, Nicole. That was, I mean, I am, I'm totally blown away. Um, I do have some questions quick shot ones that I asked my guest just so we can talk about some hobbies, talk about, <laughs> you know. Um, all right. First question. What is one hobby that you wish you got into? Yeah, I honestly, there are none because anything that I've ever wanted to take on, I've just done. You've done it. Done everything. Awesome. I've done everything I felt inspired to do. Yeah. And yeah. And when I, you know, it, there's nothing I, I, there's, there's nothing I wish I would have done or because if I, there's anything I wish I would have done, I can just do it. You can do so it one, now. One new thing is when I was in my twenties, I loved um, traveling and road tripping. And now that I'm in my forties, I decided to get an old van and convert mm -hmm. it into a camper Ooh. and travel with my cats around North America. So we'll see when. When COVID, when that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When the travel nice. ban is gone, you know, that's something that I thought, oh, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. So why not, right? That's awesome. Um, what did you want to be when you were a child? An actress. Nice. That's awesome. All right. What is your favorite movie or TV show? So hard. Um, I'm not a big TV watcher, mm -hmm. but um, I do enjoy Grey's Anatomy. Nice. All right. Next question. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Oh my gosh. What movie would I choose if I got to play a character in it? So I don't watch a lot of movies either. Mm -hmm. um, so going back, um, well, you know what? I just, I can tell you an actress. I know I haven't seen all her movies, but mm -hmm. I love um, Evan Rachel Wood. I think she's so diverse. She and, is so diverse. Yeah. She's brilliant and, yeah. and beautiful and has such deep characters. So she whatever does. she's been in, I'd probably want to be in that. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right. So you don't watch movies, but I don't know if this question would work who is your favorite superhero or if not we could even just pick a hero yeah so as you can see i'm a huge yeah. superhero <laughs> fan <laughs> yep um wonder woman mm. shout out to matt marr <laughs> wonder nice. woman is his power animal so okay Matt Mar, check it out. <laughs> All right, last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? A board game that, oh, you know, oh, I was about to say one, but I got a better one. Settlers of Catan. Oh, that's an awesome, awesome board game. I love that board game. We, we had, I had a long chat with somebody about Settlers of Catan and how, have, how they have like wooden placemats and wooden everything. I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. I am a strategist, so I oh, love yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Nice. Well, Nicole, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure speaking with you. I'll be sure to drop in your contact information, you know, where people can reach you. Uh, what's one of the best places that you, you know, what people can find you? Yeah. So, you know, we've been talking a little bit about podcasting. So I'll plug Podcasting Goldmine. So that's mm -hmm. podcastinggoldmine.com. That's podcasting, G-O-L-D-M-I-N-E. 
dot com. Perfect. That's awesome. We'll be sure. I'll be sure to drop in your social and your podcasting goldmine address and everything else on the episode download. Thank you so much again. Thank you. It was a pleasure and I love chatting with you. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on Hacks and Hobbies. We absolutely appreciate your contribution. You can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com. Please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today.